Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I repeat, ladies and gentlemen, the boy Drake has just returned with another diss track. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, your boy Drake just dropped with another diss track entitled The Heart Part 6. Ladies and gentlemen, whoo, ladies and gentlemen, we called this. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, we called this in our last discussion. We stated that in order for Drake to create an edge for himself, he must embody a bit of Kendrick in this battle. A lot of it started off with Drake creating bops, appealing to his fan base, which you should do. But you got to play defense, ladies and gentlemen. And as we stated, you have to create something that at some point will draw your opponent's fans against the wall. You have to do something that will put their backs against the wall and get them to question, hmm, this might just be close. And ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, your boy Drake's clip is loaded. Now, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, before we dive any deeper into the ordeals of this diss track, ladies and gentlemen, I want to preface this all by stating, I want to preface this all by stating, you have, regardless of how you feel about the response, regardless of how biased you are, whose corner you're in, you have to give Drizzy Drake his props in this regard. Just like Kendrick just did. Just like Kendrick just did. Right? Just like Kendrick just did. In giving us a diss track that appealed to a bop. Everything Drake's fans were saying, he hasn't given us yet. Everything has been so sappy. Everything has been so hyper lyrical. Right? Nothing has been an actual bop. Drake I'm sorry, Kendrick Lamar did that, right? This round was about defense. The previous round was about shock value. This round is about defense. And ladies and gentlemen, they both played it well. They both played it well. You can't take anything away from either one of these gentlemen. While, in my personal opinion, before we dive deep into this particular diss track, I will say that I do believe that Kendrick Lamar is slightly in the lead in this particular round, which we deem to be the defense round. Now, you could also argue that it's a tie. You could also argue that it's a tie. But here's why I'm leaning a little bit more towards giving Kendrick Lamar the edge. It's simply because while Drake attempts to make a lyrical appeal, I don't think that it does what Euphoria did. And in playing defense, I think that you should have aimed to match Kendrick Lamar's best if you were going to emulate something that he's embodied at his core throughout the beef. Because I think that in Kendrick's attempt at embodying what Drake has uh, um, uh, presented at his core throughout the beef, uh, he did well if not meeting the expectation one could argue uh, uh eclipsing it now again bias sets in whether which way you look at it but at the end of the day ladies and gentlemen this round was about defense now diving deep into the track that was released by drake all in all you have to give him his kudos for what he did in, 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 in what he presented because it wasn't a bad track and at playing defense I think he did it, 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 did, I think he did it to an except, exceptional degree I think he did it to an exceptional degree but here's my thing about the Drake track and then in general right the, 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 the stance of this particular track leans on Drake's primary angle right now Right. Drake's primary angle right now is that 
one of your kids is Dave Freeze and you beat your wife. That's his primary angle. While Kendrick Lamar's primary angle has, yes, uh, leaned on some of the uh, 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 rumor mill, some of which has been verified in, in media sources, some of which has not. But Drake, but Drake also leans on the fact that your most notable shock value bars were, thing, were things that we fed you, which were actually fake, right? And you try to make certain claims illegitimate while the uh, predatory slash sexual predator claims on behalf of Drake's crew have been validated through certain police reports the whole hyperbolic statement of calling Drake a pedophile is more based on certain things people have seen in sort of social media posts and sort of how he interacts with certain people or rather women from what we know in the rumor mill as well. So again, I think we're talking about, again, two Titans in the rap game, which we can't forget, which in general, when we're talking about people of their status or stature, it's going to be hard to find real conclusive evidence anyway. So it's impossible for for any anyone, including Drake and Kendrick Lamar, to verify anything that they're saying. But one thing I think is the biggest trump card in all of this beef is Drake is essentially attempting to uh, invalidate the honor that Kendrick Lamar is uh, seen as posturing while Kendrick Lamar is essentially illegitimizing Drake's entire cultural relevance by stating he's a culture vulture. And uh, when we analyze the 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 peak of both of their angles and in, in how they've expressed that throughout the course of the rap beef, in my personal opinion, and you can call bias if you like, I believe Kendrick Lamar has performed well at not only maintaining that, but also having a more legitimate claim to that angle. And I think for a lot of people, this rap beef has for Drake has just been about keeping up because there was a time where he was drastically behind. And for Kendrick, it's just really been about giving us more and more and more and more and more and diving deeper. I, I don't feel like at any point Drake eclipsed anything that Kendrick Lamar presented. I think there was a point where Drake had Kendrick Lamar's back against the wall with Taylor made and push ups. But once Kendrick got going, he never let his foot off the gas. And right now, ladies and gentlemen, we're getting diss tracks within 24 hours of one another. So as Drake goes on in the track, he ends his beef, his, his, his diss track with everything I'm stating is facts and everything you're saying is what we fed you while Drake still neglects the biggest uh, uh, point Kendrick made throughout this entire rap beef, which is you are a culture vulture, which you are, which is you are not a legitimate representation of the culture, right? That has yet to be addressed by Drake. While all Drake has to say is you beat your wife and one of your kids isn't yours. And you made diss tracks based on, based on rap songs that we fed you. So it's, it's, it's just, it, you can look at this from the standpoint of taking away any facts. Fine. You can look at it all from the standpoint of just being entertainment. And you can ask yourself who has been the more entertaining individual here. I think you could argue that both of them have been equally entertaining if you take away, for, if you take away the whole facet of looking at fact and fiction. You can call it a tie in terms of entertainment because they both performed well at what they do. Quite frankly, what would win it for Drake is his ability to lyrically top Kendrick. But Kendrick being as good as he is, even in showing that in tracks like Euphoria, I mean, it's, it's just so hard to beat somebody at their best. But at the same time, 
everyone said, oh, Kendrick, you're just, you're, you're dropping super boring or super personal or super dark diss tracks that aren't necessarily address, addressing the entire audience. But then when he does that, I think when we really look at it, Kendrick Lamar dropped the best song from both vantage points when we analyze the beef. And what I mean by that is, is Kendrick Lamar dropped the best lyrical track and he dropped the best mass appealing track, right? I think Drake's most mass appealing track in all of this could be argued between push-ups and, and family matters. And his most lyrical obviously is the, um, the heart part six, which he just dropped. Even though in my personal opinion, it's not the most lyrical, but to Drake's standards, it is. And he does methodically set up a lot of puns. And, and, and then even when you look at the work behind the scenes and drawing the beef to the point, I think a lot of what a lot of what Drake's uh, superpower is in all of this is how clever he's been able to be throughout all of this. And then also his ability to keep up. Right. Because while, yes, at, at some point it was 3-0 and now you could argue maybe 4-1. Right. And, and Kendrick obviously being in the lead, um, even you could you could argue for 3-2. Right. You could argue a lot. You could even argue a tie. It, it just all depends on how certain people are seeing it quite personally. But in, in, in nobody's eyes, could you actually say that Drake is winning? And to some people, they believe that if Drake ties, he wins because of how, how highly toted Kendrick Lamar is. But even to that extent, it's really based on your own bias. So, um, you know, when you look at it all, ladies and gentlemen, just from the standpoint of hip hop in general, it's been a pleasure just to witness all of this and to be present for all of this, not only as a spectator, but as a commentator, uh, providing you all my insight or rather my commentary. And I thank you all for listening. Um, uh, but quite frankly, I think there's a bigger topic that we all have to come to the conclusion of uh, as listeners and as individuals who enjoy this sport. Ladies and gentlemen, I do believe that this rap beef is coming to an end. I believe that this rap beef is coming to, the, to an end and we might see its end by the end of next week. I think by Friday next week, hell, even by the middle of the middle of the week next week, uh, we might have seen the last of this bout. The final bill will ring in the weeks to come. And ladies and gentlemen, it's been so great to witness. Uh, I think both artists win, lose or draw benefit from this in their own in their own way, in their own way. I don't think either one of them lose fans. Um, I don't think either one of them loses their credibility. I, I do think that it is um, a, a, a very big highlight when we talk about highlights that do that does sort of put a knot in Drake's career relative to his cultural legitimacy. But the people who appreciate Drake for who he is and what he is and what he produces and the way that he produces it and what he and who he who he makes it for it doesn't really bother that right because a lot of Drake's fans don't listen to him for his cultural uh, uh legitimacy they listen to him for the for what he creates and what he provides them right and in some ways an individual could argue Drake is an industry plant sort of feeding the nature of consumerism more than the culture of hip-hop in and of itself which alludes to further that culture vulture a stance that Kendrick has and then to the standpoint when we look at it on the other side with Kendrick while he's not losing any fans and he's most likely going to drop something this year if not right um maybe next year I mean we don't know when it comes to Kendrick and you know I respect the quality versus quantity stance still but at the end of the day at the end of the day right when it comes to Kendrick it can still be argued that all oh, your music is boring oh it's not you're not as good as Drake because 
you know, you, you don't do this, 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 this. But again, I do think Kendrick proved his ability to keep up if he could. Um, just in the fact that I think he dropped the best two diss tracks um, of this beef. Of this beef. And I think Kendrick Lamar wins it, but I don't think Drake flat out loses. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a good one. And I thank you all for listening. Peace.